Love from love, hope from hope, peace from our living Prince of Peace. Blessed be all people followers of love at this Christmas time, for we look unto our star of stars, the true star of Bethlehem, shining in the radiance of the glory of the most beautiful resplendence of his glittering and shimmering ecstasy come alive as he pours out his sapphire sea upon all flesh as it has been foretold uh, in Acts 2 and Joel 2 for the latter days. For these are the days that the sapphire bottomless sea of the forgetfulness of the Lord's forget, uh, forgiveness is now removed from off all peoples of love, uh, as it is written clearly in Isaiah 25. For in the latter days from off a great mountain filled with food uh, built by who, he who would come and feed the master's household meat while the master is still away, Jesus foretold of Elijah in uh, Matthew 24, 45. So welcome to the latter day mountain of spiritual food uh, as uh, Isaiah 25 has foretold. And upon this latter day mountain, because of the Lord's forgiveness, he shall remove all people's shame and his guilt uh, as we release unloving religiosity in favor for loving spirituality, a new twist on love, unconditional only. For this Lord, uh, in this day, the very best Christmas present that the Lord could give all of us is the news that no more do people have to have a false God, for this is the true God of Billy Graham, the true God of uh, Alpha, the Omega, who is our majesty of majesties and our carpenter of the ages. But he cautions people at this blessed Christmas time that if his restoration does not come forth, that is predicted in Acts 3.21, he can simply never return to earth at all. That is a guarantee. He wants to cut these days short, but only way he could do that so no flesh perishes, uh, Matthew 24, 22, is by his word, his message of Malachi 3, 1, being welcomed and uh, embraced, and yet there are no just people on earth to receive his message, uh, because in order to do that, you cannot have uh, bigotry and racist uh, leanings at all. We have leaned onto our own understanding, and we have made a God in our own image. We have made a false God who is a respecter of men that likes these ones more than those ones, which has always been a pile of BS steam and dung, the same kind of dung that the Lord will put into the faces of all religious Pharisees, standing in the way of this preparation of his most perfect peace, as the Lord says unto all flesh, I am your God, you are my people. That was foretold to be given in the latter days unto Israel and the, uh, all families of Israel. In the latter days, God would be their God, as it is written in Jeremiah 31, 1, and it was addressed correctly to uh, all mankind. I am the Lord God of all mankind, uh, Jeremiah 32, 27. And when God says, I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that means they are mine and I am theirs, which means the same exact thing as uh, Jeremiah 32, I am the God of all everyone. And so that God was eliminated because early Christians grabbed the new kingdom age covenant that was addressed correctly to Israel and all mankind. And they changed the voice of God and they brought forth a dis delusional, distortional, uh, pretend God who became after our own image, crafted into being a respecter of men. If you don't believe he's loved like the Christians say they do uh, hypocritically, then he's going to hate you forever. And, and, and justify why it's okay to not be patient, loving, unkind, no mercy. And it's always been a big pile of 
crap. Um, I am the one of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, with uh, the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, pulling down all distortionalities, one with stammering, shocking, scorned fucking lips, uh, tired of dunderheads that can't figure out that uh, Adam and Eve had no belly buttons, and can't figure out that the moment uh, Emmanuel uh, was committed to coming into this world was when Abraham had the knife over his son. For within that moment, I guarantee you, uh, if, if, if it's not true that Christ was committed, committed right then, otherwise it only would have proved that man had the capability to love God more than God had the capability to love man if he was not willing to do the same thing as uh, he had asked of Abraham. So in this hour, it's time to realize this earth was made with very great age, ancient on day one. And look up uh, T-Rex blood cell, Google images, you'll see it in the blood cells, uh, or you'll see it in the, the veins rather, fresh meat. So it's time for the revelation and restoration of all things. The restoration of the understanding that will cause now the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's message has come, Daniel 12, 9, and his word was only closed till the time of the end because his message of Malachi 3, 1 has come that prepares his way. I am the mess covenant messenger. Christ never had the words, I am your God, you are my people. When you hear those words, all faith is automatically obsolete and will float away as dust uh, and smoke in this world, just as surely as the Egyptian mythology of the Greeks and Zeus and all that faded away as well. For the truest truth has come from, from with upon this latter-day mountain, it is written clearly that God has promised to remove the veil of love that has covered absolutely all nations of the world, all peoples, as it is written in Isaiah 60. For gross darkness of the ignorance of love has covered all mankind. This is the veil that is destroyed by Christ's second coming of his word of Matthew 24, him on the great white cloud, him on the great white cloud of Revelation 14 is right now. Uh, and it's right now because he is declaring to all people the words that make all uh, uh, religion obsolete, sending Satan Iblis to the pit because Revelation 12 foresaw in the latter days he ha would have to be removed because Satan Iblis Diablo Beelzebub Mephistopheles, the snake of Eden, that guy with the darting tongue, remember him? He had always been the accuser of the brethren. Uh, the Bible gives that reason for him him having been removed because our Lord with his everlasting covenant of his everlasting uh, uh, gospel of Revelation 14 of which I am the writer of the flying scroll of Zechariah 5, the writer of the everlasting gospel Revelation 14, the writer foretold line by line would come Isaiah 28, the writer foretold Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, the one like Moses. I dare anyone to scroll down about 30, 40 videos, find the everlasting gospel. Sounds exactly like Moses, but instead of in the beginning uh, came the, the dark, or <laughs> they came the light opposite. Check it out. It's amazing. Uh, when the Lord showed me this because he has always been light pre-existing all things and so in this hour it's time to be rejuvenated get excited because if anybody believes what I'm saying all people in the world will immediately believe in Christ uh, and by the antiquated way uh, obsolete way of wrongly looking at salvation people thought you believe and then you get saved no one gets saved we are saved that's the best news. We're all saved, every single one of us, unless we do not be, have our hearts become as little children again, with our love alive, moving forth as a verb, instead of standing in the walk, in, as the land of the walking dead, with a, an appearance of godliness, but denying the power of love, who is Christ living within us? That is the secret name of Christ to which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess love, for all those who love are 
born of God and know him because he is love. And so in this hour, it's time to beat our sword into the sickle, to learn the ways of war no more, to change our conditional love that has never been love at all into true love that is unconditional. Because wide is the way to hell paid by conditional love that has never been sold out, it never been insincere, always has been hypocritical, always loves because or if. And uh, God promises in Jeremiah 31 that his new covenant would have not no ifs and buts, no demands at all. And there are no demands at all because it's not about us, lest any man boast. It's what uh, Christ the Lord did for us before the foundation of the earth being slain for all people. Behold, his arms are not too short to, to save us. And his salvation is flowing forth as a river from that sapphire sea, that bottomless uh, abyss of loveliness and his very best blessings, his most tender mercies. Uh, because uh, the most important verse in the Bible right now is found in Jeremiah 30, 24. For it is written, it says this, Salute. It says, take a cup of coffee. Gotta have a little Joe now. The most important verse in the whole Bible for this hour of the great bear rising here and now, you can go eat all the flesh that you would like, Daniel 7 5. This hour of Revelation 10, the days of the trial of all flesh, COVID, that's come to bring God's word of patience. In this hour, we must listen to the Lord. And uh, the wheat and the tares cannot grow together. I call the wheat, the tares must stay behind. Because if the good fruit is not taken out of the bowl from away from the bad fruit, all the fruit will become bad. And so wide is the way to hell. Because uh, this world has a false God. Christianity have the biggest false God of all. Their God is not a God of unconditional love. Their God is a, a, a God who is a respecter of man. And for damn sure, their God is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible says, I am the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. I am the good shepherd of all the flocks of man, uh, John 10. Pew! End of religion right there. Can anybody say, wow. So these are the days of the dove's devotion. Listen closely, O ye lovers of our desire of the nations who can now be. He never could have been the uh, accuser of, uh, he became the accuser of the brethren. He became as the devil with a twisted understanding of the judgmentalism and the condemnation that uh, mankind has been feeding ourselves. It's been a bunch of load of crap. And so the Lord says unto all his Pharisees, if you do not embrace this message that glorifies the kingdom of love, I will take the diary of shit dung crap by, even the dung from your most sacred feast, and I will push it into your face and that diarrhea will go down your throats like chocolate syrup, says the Lord God. I am the one with fucking stammering lips. And if you tune away from me, fucking go stand in more officials. Line the revealed lawless one. The lawless one had to be revealed and the Lord used me to do it. He is the one that would die by a sword in Revelation 13 because he is a sword swallower, a freak show who built his empire of dirt, uh, his YouTube channel fame. He's got over a million followers followers, uh, glorifying atheism and no God and no one to forgive us, no one to love us. And this has always been a bunch of hokum bokum. And this guy founds a, a, a religion on the basis of bringing world unity and world peace. He's got no way to friggin' do what he said. Uh, uh, and I do because the Lord God is bringing the message, the perfect message of Malachi 3, one, it is on the table. It is the same message that causes Jeremiah one ten and Haggai 2.2 2, to tear down all kingdoms of man's imagination, not built solely upon the Lord's unconditional love. For in these days, the Lord God has appointed Israel a brand new name because they have received their covenant. Their name is Chrislam, Isaiah 62.2. If God did not appoint them a new name in these days, as he said he would in the 
in the book, he would have been a liar. So if you want a God that's a liar, ignore what I'm saying. But the reason he's named them Chrislam is because they had inherited all mankind. Israel has, uh, according to Isaiah 54, 3. And so in this hour of love's power being poured out as an ocean of deeper depths have you never seen. So it's time to realize that the simple shall now inherit uh, folly, but the wise shall evermore be crowned with the real exciting knowledge that it only takes but a little spark of devotion in order to get a mighty spiritual fire burning like a huge inferno of God's most abundant love as that desire of all nations love himself um, stands tall in the glory of his majesty and as that majesty of majesties does know that if this message at this given at this Christmas time is not shared as the best good news of all this world will end up being destroyed because uh, there'll be no birds no fish no mankind left at all Zephaniah 1 1 only death is ahead of me I am Shiloh one whose eyes have been red and dull of wine uh, and they've been red because I smoke a little bit of herb up here in uh, Canada and so my eyes have been uh, red with THC and so it is time because of this apparent truth the least of the Lord's people who have their love moving forth as a little child it's time that uh, they no longer need to spend the rest of their years in a valley, sighing in a valley of tears. For death shall become the funeral of all of our sorrows once and for all. Come the oppression of hell or the horrors of its highest lava flow. And so surely a maggot, surely a maggot cannot praise you, O Lord God, nor can a grave worm recount your loving kindness. But the living can praise you, even though stumbling can laud over you, because as we walk two steps forward and one step back, we are always going in the right direction regardless. And in revealing your charity unto them and by your righteousness, you now enlighten them, those whom you have chosen, so that all falsehoods of uh, understandings that you have had favorites among men will go away and vanish as smoke, as Hebrews 8 said would happen in the latter days. For in your hand alone is the soul of absolutely every living human that has ever been, and you have all loved each and every one of us equally the same. Uh, and all have been saved unless they commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin of casting Christ right out of their heart because he is our love. There is no damn good man, not even one. The just will live by my faith, even though Habakkuk 2, King James, even though I have been transgressed by wine, because my hell is already as fire and can never be satisfied, is as greedy as hell, as I gather all people of the earth unto our living Lord. I am the messenger of the north, from Isaiah 41, foretold the Elijah, the Shiloh, the latter-day Daniel, that is my name. And so it is time to see more than ever uh, that y your word has come forth for the tares and for the, the wheat alike. And uh, so deal with us, O Lord God Almighty, the Lord God of all mankind, the Lord God of all the flocks of man. Deal with all of us according to all of your goodness, according to all of your great overflowing mercy, according to your many righteous deeds, to which uh, there shall never be an end, for your mercy endures forever. And praise that Almighty One without ceasing, that our Messiah, Emmanuel, our God with us again, will now let all people know that the Trinity is exactly like a big blob of mercury. It doesn't matter whether the mercury is in one blob, two, five, ten, a hundred million, it doesn't matter. 
when it's together it is mercury and when it is apart in separate little beaded balls it is mercury there is no difference when you see one you see it all so praise that almighty one without ceasing and blessed be our most high lord of heaven who executes mighty miracles while crowning crowning while crowning his obedient followers with his loving kindness and his everlasting mercy got to be careful wixing those merds now but I never underestimate the power of a snook and I've been a pretty good snook in my days and all of you guys have been snooks too people arrive at a place where they think they're not a snook and then they're the biggest snooks of them all so my soul therefore praises the almighty name of our carpenter of ages, the resurrected Lamb of God. And it's time to sing high praises unto the returning groom of the Bride of Christ who will now be adorned uh, in her best Sunday go to meet and close. Um, and so it's time for the Lord's loving ways and it's time to proclaim his faithfulness and of his praise, O beneficent one and the magnificence thereof there is no end possible so multitudes of brethren of people awaiting his word this time of the year this is the most exciting message of christmas of all because our star of bethlehem is shining the radiance of his crystalline bottomless blue ocean of his forgiveness and his forgetfulness so near death was i for my sins and my iniquities had sold me over to the grave but love saved me uh, and it was an inside job and that joy springs forth forever O oh Lord in spite of myself having been so unfaithful to his causes O oh Lord of grace according to your great mercy and according to your to your many righteous acts indeed I have loved your most precious name and as it is foretold in Psalms 21 I the one from the north call upon your name every day all day long um, and so it's time to go out to the deep he is the priceless pearl of great reward and the treasure of excellence is his unconditional love and it is the excellence of all treasure and so exceedingly great protection protection have I found within his heavenly refuge and I invite all of you to go to the same place mount up therefore on eagles wings for our dove of love wants us to go much higher than he has ever allowed before in these days of the veil being pulled off all of the Lord's love from off all the nations removed from off his latter day mountain of Daniel Owsley videos uh, 13,000 and cl climbing quickly I promise you in only two years no one will ever break my record of 13,000 I just began and when I remember the Lord's incredible might within my overflowing joyful heart uh, I, I become brave upon his endless mercies and the encouragement from he who is courage as he calls out love from love hope from hope and peace from peace and so in this hour the Lord will purify all of us externally from our iniquity by his bloodshed over absolutely all of us and by our realization that we are angels of the angel of the Lord we are stars of that star of stars uh, he said in John 10 we are gods and I tell you the Bible says we will be as the angels neither male nor female in the afterlife Google it it's in the Bible say so and the Bible says the glory of his latter house will be greater than that of the former and the first is last the last is first we are created last because we have a greater glory and a shining than the hosts who skipped the fl in flush uh, encasement there of being enveloped by our own sinfulness but the Lord has great faith he sees us not as we are but as we will be the second we enter glory we are sinless as the day that we are born as we leave it behind in our flesh as we become the spirit beings that we were created to be uh, this is only our maggot time this is our time in the cocoon this is our time 
to learn how to, to soar with the eagles and not with the vultures. And so, uh, Lord will purify us and give us trust and spirit of loving faith and loving knowledge. And he will lead us besides his most beautiful still waters so that we won't perish in a parched, dry, drought world that is uh, deprived of the Lord's spirit of love if they will not have ears to hear. I am Elijah. I am Shiloh. I am Daniel. I am Elijah, the, not of the uh, returning to witness Elijah. That is the, the, the dream vision of two candlesticks uh, in Revelation. I am the Elijah of the one candlestick uh, vision of Zechariah, which is totally a different vision. Uh, in the two candlestick of Revelation for the returning original Elijah, he will be death and people will celebrate sending each other presents when he's killed in the streets of, uh, of uh, Jerusalem. So I am not that returning original. I am the one. Uh, and by the way, that verse says, and the two uh, uh, olive trees are the two lampstands because they've been resurrected. Not so with the lamps, one lampstand of Zechariah. Uh, that is ab absolutely different. And the one candlestick is one man. And the two, uh, the two olive trees are two women. If you keep reading Zechariah, it is absolutely two women. It, it says so. Uh, anyway, but the whole truth is this, that one guy is, does not have the power of the other. And uh, that's because I'm not resurrected and neither are the two natural ladies revealed. The, the house of beloved, she asks, uh, she is the woman of Revelation 12 whom the Lord has breathed upon to be an end-time prophetess and end-time writer. And if you do not believe me, please, I beg of you, watch uh, House of Beloved, uh, her video called Apocalypse. It is finished, and you will agree with me if you can. So it's time that the Lord needs to to bring forth uh, new understandings with his living waters washing us clean and secretly have been the righteous uh, of love chastened lest any sinners rejoice over us any unloving people for our hope of glory corrects us as a beloved son is corrected and his chastisement of peace uh, is like that of a firstborn with love. It comes, uh, if he did not prune us, he, he would not love us. Uh, if he did not groom us and make us grow, uh, because that wonderful one spares uh, not his chosen ones. And he, because of that, he blots out our errors by way of his forgiveness, which he instantly, by way, uh, he transforms our blackest sins into the image of his very own snow white sinlessness. So he sees no, uh, no crimson red color except the blood that he shed before the foundation of earth for all people beloved of his love. And for the life of those walking down his holy road, it shall be forever, but sinners shall be taken away unto destruction. But I tell you, verily, verily, says the Spirit of the Lord, it is not sinners that are destroyed, it is the byproduct of their sin, the loveless. Lovelessness is what sinfulness brings, and everyone committing the unforgivable sin of casting Christ's love out of their chest, they are taken away unto destruction because they leaned unto the ways of the lovelessness that sin brings everyone. And then their memorial of such loveless fools will be found no more upon the earth. But upon all those enlightened, letting their obsolete understanding fall away, uh, it's time to realize that the everlasting grace of the Lord is upon all those who fear him, 
with respect. It is crazy to fear love. That is his truest essence. And the wrath of God has never existed. It has always been metaphor uh, in many, many ways, and that is provable. Now, there is an exception to a rule, and I would win that debate too, because uh, it is written that God has no favorites. So was uh, David really an apple of his eye? Yeah, but he, he wasn't uh, a favorite. Uh, I'm a grapefruit of his eye. You're a potato of his eye. What, what's that mean? So listen now, O oh believers. Put on your glorious garments and make ready your holiest whitest robes for I don't care what you call him and neither does the Lord whether you call him Elohim Allah uh, you can call him Adolf if you want I don't know but he is the Lord God Elohim he is Adonai he is the carpenter of the ages and as the love uh, unadulterated he is the desire of all nations and so concerning his faithful few it's time that we all start crying out his holy name of love to which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to call out his name with reverence and most worthy to be praised is that creator of life and love who chooses to judge the quick and the dead in the whole with holiness of his forgiveness and so thank you evermore O carpenter of the ages for letting none of us become dishonored in ruin so that in these days of the removal of Satan as it has happened in accordance with Revelation 12 in the latter days as it has been written he had to be removed as the accuser of the brethren or he would have made God into a liar. Saved by the bell. We'll be right back. And so it's time to look at the vibrant colors that come forth from love. And it's time to realize that all day, every day, should be Christmas time. Love is the reason for the season. That is Christ's name of 1 John 4, 7. And all those who love are born of him and know him because he is love. And remember that together we're like a bunch of beautiful flowers separately, but together we become bright like a laser beam to pierce the darkest night around us. So let all of my brothers and sisters uh, in love rejoice and let everyone rejoice in the house of our Father um, and uh, let all people start being rightly divided uh, on this word of prophecy because people of the world will not obey prophecy. Uh, it is written by Paul that concerning prophecy such must be inspected most carefully and all that is good must be embraced. People will not even look for at it. Uh, Muhammad said we have no ground to stand on unless we stand on the gospel, uh, the law, and all uh, prophecy, all revelation coming from God. People don't realize only by prophecy God has made a way where there seems to have been no way. People do not like the truth. It does not tickle their ears, but the truth would bring peace, love, and joy unending and every single person that will not like my videos is a motherfucker and I'm talking to you you're a mother friggin asshole and so leave this place of peace do not return if you will not start liking these videos because you're going to kiss your ass goodbye prematurely these are days of death Malachi 4 6 Deuteronomy 18 18 Acts 3 it says the same thing. Matthew 24, 22, Isaiah 24, the earth in peace is never to rise again. Zephaniah 1, 1, earth with no birds, no fish, no mankind left. So it's time that we need to repent of our hypocrisies.